South Florida delivers the first truly shocking results of the season. Let's talk about that and some of the other afternoon college football action. It's honestly difficult to come up with the words to describe what just happened. South Florida marches into the swamp and is the more physical team than Florida. They just straight up matched them throughout the game and left absolutely no doubt they belong in this one. The Gators just sloppy turnovers, mistakes, and South Florida just hung around long enough to kick that game-winning field goal. I mean, it's undeniable after what they did to Boise State and now what they just did to Florida. This team is legit. They are the head and shoulders group of five front runner. They still play Miami. What happens if they start 3-0 and and beat Miami? Who knows? This is really bad for Florida. Billy Napier firmly back on the hot seat, and there needs to be some serious changes for the Florida offense and for this team in general in order for him to get off the hot seat. The border war delivered on every single level we thought it could. This game was nuts. Big play touchdowns, defensive scores, big plays by both sides of the football. But at the end of the day, Missouri's playmakers just stepped up in the fourth quarter. Brett Norfleet, one of the best tight ends in college football. He could not be stopped when Missouri got him the football. And at the end of the day, a spirited effort by a Kansas team. That will be a problem in the Big 12 this year. But a big win for Missouri. They got that nice cushiony start to the schedule. They could ride to a 6-0 start. Keep an eye on Missouri. They're going to sneak up on some people. Ohio springs a trap on West Virginia. It was a game where I rocked with the Bobcats, and they come out and they do it. They showed they could compete at this level versus Rutgers last week, and West Virginia falls, their first loss of the season. Tough pill to swallow losing to a group of five team like that, but there's some that you just can't mess with. And in this case, Ohio came ready to play, and they pull off the win. You've got to give a lot of credit to Ole Miss for going on the road, getting a conference victory this early in the season. That's an impressive thing to do, especially against a team in a program that has kept it so close in each of those last four or five matchups. So a quality win, I think, to be able to pull that one out. And for Kentucky, a glimmer of hope. The offense doesn't look as helpless as it did last year. Oklahoma State is an awful team this year. If they win more than four games, it would shock me. I think Gundy's on the hot seat. I do not see him being the coach going forward after this season. Ducks are obviously elite. It takes an elite team to score that often with that much potency and just run all over a team. We're still waiting to see them get truly tested because, again, I just think this is an awful Oklahoma State team. We'll stay in the state of Oregon, though, to talk about one of the more pathetic performances I've seen. Oregon State has now scored six touchdowns on the year. Four of them came in this game and they have not converted a single one or two point conversion all year. There's been botched PATs, there's been two point conversions failed left and right. It's been pretty embarrassing. It's very arguable that it was the difference in this game. There's a late pick six that makes it more lopsided than it was. This one was really like 29 to 27. Uh, Just pretty embarrassing. I'll probably make a separate video on Oregon State because Oregon State football needs to be talked about.